Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very small form factor gaming PC that I recently picked up on Craigslist. And in the past, I've actually taken a look at a very similar model to this, but this one does have a bit of an upgrade and I'm really excited to see how it performs. This is known as the MSI Trident and there's a lot of these models on the market, but this one's powered by a 10th Gen i5 with 6 cores and 12 threads. And the previous owner actually upgraded from a GTX 1650 to a GTX 1660. I'm a huge fan of this case design. I mean, it's definitely small and this did come with a vertical stand. So we have that right here. You can either lay it horizontal or vertical with this stand here. We've also got the power supply, which just happens to be a 230 watt power supply, which should be plenty for the hardware we're running in this unit. Now this wasn't without issues when I initially picked it up. On the GPU and the CPU, I was seeing some really high temps, so I went in here and I actually replaced the thermal paste on both of those. It also didn't have an SSD. It's got a spot for an M.2, but it's really hard to get to, and there was only a one terabyte mechanical drive installed. The previous owner stated that it did take a long time to boot up, and really it comes down to everything running off of that mechanical drive. So I installed a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and it was such a pain to get to. I had to take all the side panels off, but uh, luckily there is a spot for that M.2. So I'm running the operating system from that new M.2 and I kept the older hard drive just as some extra storage for games. It also had 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. And like I mentioned, I did replace the thermal paste on the GPU and the CPU side of things to keep those temps down because that GPU was actually getting really hot in here. It was kind of dusty, it really wasn't that bad, but I did go ahead and use a vacuum to get everything out of here. And now it looks brand new and it's functioning, I'd say, better than ever. When it comes to I.O., up front here we have our audio in, audio out, USB Type-C, and we also have two USB 3.1 ports. I guess they're calling these super speed USB ports. Around back here we've got some more audio in and out, Gigabit Ethernet, five more USB ports, HDMI from the internal graphics, but this doesn't have internal graphics built in. I guess that's just in case you're using a K-series CPU, and our four pin power input. When it comes to the specs for the CPU, this is using the i5-10400F. We don't have any built-in graphics here. Six cores, 12 threads. We've also got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz and that GTX 1660. And on that CPU, we have a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.3. So far, everything's been working out really well. And ever since I changed the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU, temps have been much better. Before swapping it out while playing something like Doom Eternal, I was hitting in the 80s with that CPU and now it's way down. We'll take a look at that by the end of this video. But yeah, that was one of the big issues with this computer when I first got it. Other than just having a mechanical hard drive because it was really, really slow to boot. But since I wiped that other drive and installed Windows to the SSD, everything's been really snappy and I'm actually really happy with the gaming performance of this machine. And in this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some games, and we'll definitely test out some emulation by the end of this video. But first things first, let's take a look at those benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core score of 1097, multi 6049. I'm not really impressed by the single or the multi core score here, given that we have these higher core count, higher clocked Ryzen APUs on the market right now. But I still think this 10400F can get some gaming out of the way. Next benchmark on the list is 3D Mark Fire Strike. We scored a total score of 12,571. And finally, Time Spy with a 5,586. So with the benchmarks out of the way, it's time to jump right into some PC gaming. And first up, we have Forza Horizon 5, Ultra Settings, 1080p, and I got an average of 74 FPS. When I initially went into this, I just set it to that high preset. It was doing such a good job, I figured we could do Ultra. And as you can see here, we're getting some really great performance out of this one. Next up, we have The Witcher 3, and this is a mix of ultra and high, and basically I just turned hair works off, and we got an average of 68 FPS. So if you want a little more out of it, you can turn some of those settings back down to high, and it's still going to look great.
Halo Infinite did way better than I thought it would, where at 1080p ultra settings we got an average of 76 FPS out of this, and I'm sure if we're out in a big open area doing the campaign, lots of effects on screen it will go a bit lower, but multiplayer you should be good to go with that ultra setting over 60. Here's GTA 5, very high settings except for grass detail, and we got an average of 104 FPS, and I figured we'd get really good performance with that GTX 1660. Doom Eternal, 1080p, Ultra, we got an average of 88 FPS, and I did try Nightmare, but unfortunately just won't let me select that because we only have 6 gigabytes of VRAM, but Ultra still looks great. And finally, we have Cyberpunk 2077. This is a mixture of high and medium settings with population density set to medium because that really does take a toll on the GPU and CPU. We got an average of 63 FPS, so going all the way down to medium is probably the way to go. When it comes to emulation on a machine like this, I figured we'd be able to get most of this stuff out of the way no problem at all. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, PS2 is going to be good to go at 1440p. I didn't test in 4K because my monitor here is only 1440, but even at 4K I think we could pull this off with that 1660. We're also getting amazing performance with Wii U emulation using SimU. I got that Vulcan back end going. We're at 60 FPS, 1440p with Breath of the Wild. And again, I really do think that we'd be able to handle this at 4K. We're only at about 55% utilization on that GPU, and we've got plenty of CPU power to go with this one. I didn't see any dips at all with this at 1440p. And finally, PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan backend, 60 FPS with Skate 3 at 1440p, I'd say yeah, this is really nice. Now when it comes to games like God of War 3, probably not going to be able to do it, but if you check out the compatibility list for RPCS3, it just says end game. If you head over there and check the list out, as long as it says playable, this machine's going to handle it. Checking out average CPU temps at idle, we're around 38 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 68, and the maximum that I could get this to hit was 88 because that's where it's set at the thermal throttle, and that was with Cinebench R23. About 8 minutes into it, it did thermal throttle. Now another thing I always like to look at is total power consumption from the wall. So while I was testing this, I had this plugged into a kilowatt meter. At idle, we're around 34 watts. While gaming, it pulls around 137. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out all six cores, 12 threads, and that GTX 1660 was 193 watts. So we're under that 230 watt power supply that comes included with this unit. So overall, I'm really impressed by the performance of this machine given the form factor here. I do wish I had a bigger power supply because I wanted to add an i9 CPU to this and I don't know if this cooler would be sufficient. But the real thing that's stopping me is the included power supply. Coming in at only 230 watts, with a 10th gen i9 we would pull much more than that and we need power for the GPU also. I've looked online trying to find a higher wattage power supply and the highest thing I can find is a 330 watt and with a 10th gen i9 I think we'd still be pushing it. But I'm willing to try it if you're interested in seeing a video like that so let me know in the comments below. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see any other emulators or games running on this machine like it sits right now, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.